To start retopology, I'm going to first re-enable symmetry along the x-axis. And, and this way we will just, even though the details of our model are asymmetrical, the overall shape still is symmetrical. And so our retopology mesh uh, can respect that. And that'll just save us a little bit of time. So if I hop on over to the retopology room. All right. So to start this out, I'm going to start with the mouth here. And because this is a nice curved shape that I need to actually maintain good topology on because it'll be deforming quite a lot, I'm going to use the strokes tool. Now the way this works is that you draw some splines and then you draw them in a sort of grid pattern. And then anywhere where these splines intersect, it'll create a vertice. So if I hit enter, you'll see it created those polygons where we had these intersections. So you can see there are six uh, well-defined quads and that's what we get with the strokes tool. So this is really good if you're doing retopology for an organic model. It lets you save a lot of time because what you can do is I can just draw a spline going here around the outside because that's where needs to go. Now as you see here towards the bottom I can't keep drawing down there because it goes off the screen so if I let go the spline will be defined and then if I want to continue the spline here I need to actually draw another spline that meets up with it. So if I click and draw, drag from the bottom here go around and you'll see that the spline that the point on the spline turns white that means that they'll be merged if I let go so if I let go now it is one continuous spline. Now to fine tune this, you can click and drag on any one of the, uh, the small green dots that you see here. You'll see they highlight in white when you hover over them. So I'll click and drag that, and you see I can fine tune the position of this spline. All right, so now I just need to draw several more that uh, kind of respect the topology. It's important to take into consideration just how exactly your model is going to deform. So this is the mouth. The, uh, the top will obviously, this area will be uh, compressing a lot, so I want to make sure that I've got a lot of uh, vertical edge loops in there to accommodate that. And this area will be, this will sort of be a, a hinge type of area. You see where the top of the jaw jawbone is. So I want to make sure that I have uh, edge loops that are going kind of parallel to that. All right, I'll hit enter. Now it's not perfect. There are a few problem areas like this polygon right here. So I'll go ahead and delete some of those. Now at this stage, in order to find, in order to make the adjustments on this, I can go to my points and faces tool and I can right click and drag individual vertices in order to in order to more precisely adjust their positions. So I right here it looks like I can probably delete some of these edges. Now if I hold down control that'll actually delete entire edge loops. And then with the points and faces tool I can move this around and if you drag one vertex on top of another vertex, it'll highlight in red, and that means that it's going to get merged. So I'll let go, and then it becomes merged. And you'll see with the symmetry that we're getting a virtual mirror of our object, of our retopology mesh, over on this side. So I'll move these vertices in the middle to line up with the symmetry plane. And then over in this area, I see that the density of some of these polygons isn't quite um, 
as even as I want it to be. So what I'll do is I can go in with my brush tool and if I right click and drag to make that bigger, if I hold down shift, that'll actually relax the vertices and sort of even out the spacing between them. There we go. And then if I just click and drag with the brush, I can sort of very smoothly move some of these vertices over. And then with points and faces, I can right click in here, wherever I see this sort of blue uh, set of um, preview quads, and I can get a new triangle. Now, here's an interesting area. You see how shallow the angle is? right here between these two edges. It would not be necessarily a great idea for me to add in a quad like that because now A, it's not going to line up very well with this and B, any subsequent quads are going to be quite uh, elongated which I don't necessarily want in an area where the deformations are going to be so uh, so great. So there's a couple solutions to this one solution, at least to mitigate the problem, would be to grab these polygons and sort of try and drag them out as much as I can, realistically. This is a video game model, so I don't want the polygon count to be too high. But one thing I can do making sure that this lines up with the bone plate is I can make a quad like that that doesn't mat line up or doesn't merge with this edge and then I can make a separate quad that sort of shoots off from the side of that and I get what's known as a five uh, pointed vertice here and that's very common in modeling uh, that's this is a very common trick and um, Having five edges that meet at a point here is not a bad thing. It's only when you get more than five that meet at a single point. That's known as a pole, and that can be very bad because it's very difficult to shade a pole. You get a lot of rendering artifacts with them. because we obviously can't merge these together very cleanly. So I can go in with my uh, delete polygons tool here and just start deleting these where I feel necessary. So I'm going to keep those. I'll delete this edge right here. Now the bottom of our model, we're not going to be seeing it as much as the top, so it's okay if we have fewer overall polygons here. It's not going to be that important of an, of an issue because we will mainly be seeing this model from the top. And it's important to keep those kinds of things in mind so you know where to put most of your effort.